John, is everything okay? I'm not sure. I got a note here. What is it? That I'm going away for a few days, but I'll be back. Please don't worry about me. This is something I must do. Donald. Where has he gone? Well, he doesn't say. I don't understand. What? Why would he just leave like that? Oh, he's been under a lot of pressure here. I, I can understand why he'd want to go f away for a few days, and he does say he'll be back. Can I see that? He says he's going away for a few days, and then he'll be back, but it doesn't say when. Yeah. Something I must have Donald. I can't stand to even see that name written. It seems so wrong. Well, but not to him, you see. That's John, who's to say that my father hasn't just disappeared the way he did before? We never may see him again. Now, take it easy, will you? Listen, I know his Donald Saunders personality very well. He seems to be a man of his word. If he says he'll be back, and he does, I think he'll But be he back. shouldn't be wandering around. He's not a well man. Who knows what he might do? Apparently, he felt well enough to take off for a couple of days. Now, don't worry about it, okay? Everything is going to be just fine. Exactly like I thought it would. What do you think, Seth? Do you like it? Oh, it's charming. It's absolutely charming. You made such a nice choice. Thank you. you folks haven't been here before? No, no, it's our first time. Well, a shame you couldn't get up here in time to see the autumn leaves. No. That's uh, really a beautiful time of the year, and uh, season's over now. <laughs> Thanksgiving, then Christmas. Winter will be here before we know it. Yeah, the year passes quickly. Oh, they all do. <laughs> <laughs> you folks taking a long vacation? Oh, no, just a few days. We, uh, we just wanted to get away from it all for a little while. No, don't blame you. We all need more of that. Even those of us who run vacation spots for other people. Yeah. <laughs> now, your uh, thermostat's over here on this wall. Good. You probably won't have to monkey with it too much. There's wood there for your fireplace. And if you need anything else, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. No, no, that's, that's all right. No need for that. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Call us if you need anything and uh, enjoy your stay with us. Thank you. Well, I'm sure we will. Absolutely. Well, here we are. We're alone at last. A minute too soon, either. Oh, Donald, thank you for bringing me here. I love it. Well, I hoped you would. It's good for us to be away from Oakdale, all by ourselves for a little while. Yeah, we'll make the most of it too. Don't you worry. As the world turns. This portion brought to you by Pert, the shampoo for bouncing and behaving hair. And by delicious Mountain Grown Folgers. Mountain Grown for rich flavor. What do you use in the automatic drip coffee maker? Folgers Flake Coffee. Mm, delicious. What do you use in the automatic coffee maker? Folgers Flake Coffee. Great. Mrs. Olson, what do you use? Oh, Folgers Flake Coffee. Nothing's better in these coffee makers. Why is that? Oh, Folgers is mountain grown. The richest kind of coffee. And it's flaked? Flaked to release more rich flavor. You use less. If you normally use five measures, you'll only need four of Folgers Flaked Coffee. Delicious. <laughs> Folgers is a coffee recommended by General Electric with the Brew Starter Timer. Mountain grown Folgers. That's how good coffee makers make great coffee. <gasps> Mommy Pope! Giving some help on the night of the prom. Cheering a tinier tot. Little things mean a lot. Little things do mean a lot. So I care about everything that touches our lives. Like White Cloud. White Cloud? Nothing softer feel. It is soft. White Cloud's got two full fluffy plies, and it's absorbent. 
watch. Wow. The most absorbent. Softness, fullness, absorbency. That's white cloud quality for this family. White cloud, because little things mean a lot. We're bouncy. But her hair isn't. It's so dirty and oily. It won't bounce, so we shampoo a lot. But then it can get so dry, fly away, it won't behave. But we discovered Pert. No other leading shampoo has Pert's cleaning conditioner. My hair's so manageable, I love it. Now I hear so clean it bounces. So manageable, it behaves. Bouncing and behaving hair. That's Pert. Look, Brack, the, uh, the greatest danger right now is the possibility of infection. Eric's running a slight fever, but that's not unusual for his condition because his vital signs are stable, and that's good. And uh, the deepest uh, cuts he had were the chest lacerations. That's where he lost most of his blood, and that's what traumatized him. <sighs> Wait a minute. I'm a little confused here. Is his life still in danger? You say one good thing about him, and then you say one bad thing about him. I lost track along the way here. Is he going to be all right? Look, all I can tell you is that time puts the odds on our side. I mean, if we can get him through the night... I'm, uh, I'm optimistic. Optimistic? Oh, that's well. Brad, it's just too soon. We understand your anxiety, but you want us to be straight with you. Yes, I do. Now, what about his mental state? Is his mind going to be okay, or is he going to have some kind of residual effect from this? I understand that people sometimes have reoccurrences from taking drugs like LSD and such. PCP is just as unpredictable. Look, I wish I could say something that would put your mind at rest. But the truth is, we cannot answer your questions until Eric regains consciousness. Then, when his mind is clear, we'll be able to tell whether or not there is a residual effect from this drug. More wait and see. But Brad, Brad, we can't be any more explicit now, okay? We don't have the diagnostic equipment we need, all right? Look, a friend of mine is passing through town on a lecture tour. I'm sure you've heard of her, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Yes, I've heard of her. I'll bet that she can answer a lot of your questions. Well, I hope so. The only thing I want to know right now is when can I see him? Well, Haley's in with him now. He's unconscious. But uh, when she leaves, if you want, go in and see him. I do. And the only other thing I want is to find the people who did this to him and get them. And I will. I swear it. If it's the last thing I do, lousy drug pushers and dealers. Hey, John, but what are we going to do about it? Well, I think the first thing you have to do is make a conscious decision that you're not going to fall apart over this. Because if you do, your mother catches it from you, your sister catches it from you, and then well, we got everybody overreacting. Overreacting? Is that what you think I'm doing, really? Yes, I do. Well, I'm not, John. The man happens to be my father, and he's not well. He shouldn't be wandering around by himself. I don't think he's by himself. What do you mean? I think he's with Cynthia Haynes. Why? Why? I mean, why, why, why do you think that? Why are you sure of that? Because he's done an awful lot of thinking and talking about Cynthia Haynes here lately. Cynthia? Haynes, yes. Really? Oh, come on now. We interrupted their wedding. They were going to be married, right? I think it's very unrealistic to think that he's simply going to forget about her. I know that's what your mother would like, but listen, that's not going to happen. He misses her. He wants to be with her, and I think that's where he is right this minute.
Six Formula 44 D, please. Helen, with this nasty cough plus congestion, I need... Formula 44 D. But, Helen, I need a decongestant, not just strong cough medicine. You need Formula 44 D. It's strong like Formula 44. Has the strongest non-narcotic cough suppressant you can buy. Plus, ingredients to help unstuff your nose and loosen up for chest congestion. That's what I said. Formula 44 D. Strong for coughs plus congestion. Why have a dud spud when you can have a grater potato? Pour on the Heinz gravy. Put a lake in your bake. Give a rise to your fries. Pour on the Heinz. Add some flash to your mash. Some royal to your boil. Pour on the Heinz. Gravy so smooth, so creamy, so delicious, you'd think it was made from your roast. So who needs a dud spud? When you can have a grater potato. Uh, pour on the Heinz homestyle gravy anytime. This week, get your holiday look together at Sears Junior Bazaar Sale. With savings on styles that go together. Choose a ruffle trim shirt and stripes or solids. Get pleated belted corduroy pants and pastel plaid skirts, just $14.99 each. And get it all together with soft pastel v-neck sweaters, now just $15.99. Save 25% at Sears Junior Bazaar. But hurry, sale ends Saturday. To wrap up a beautiful Christmas, you can count on Sears. Opening now at Sears, a Christmas of red ribbon values. Lots of cute sleepers from Winnie the Pooh. On sale at Sears. Pretty little nightgowns from the Sunny Bunch too. On sale, three cheers. NFL teams, buy the score, save 20%. Furthermore, on sale at Sears, three cheers. <laughs> right now, 20% off. To wrap up a beautiful Christmas, you can count on Sears. Saturday on an all-new Disney, Mary Braden's the new manager of Cherokee Station with a daughter, a friend, and the courage to make it on her own, the Cherokee Trail. Then on the Saturday night movie, when a Georgia boy falls in love with a New York woman, he's as welcome in her heart as he is in the neighborhood. John Schneider in Dream House. It all happens Saturday. Well, if you're strong, you know, you just have to be kind of strong and accept some of these facts. You're right, it's not gonna help if I get upset. No, no, it's not. What am I gonna tell my mother? She's already so upset that Dad's not going to treat me right away. Well, it's kinda touchy, I know, John, but... John, John, I just had a thought. What if they've gone off to get married? Oh, no, I don't think they've... But gonna... you just said so yourself, that he misses her, he's been thinking about her. I mean, we interrupted their wedding once before. Maybe they've gone to finish it off. Maybe they've gone and gone. Hold it. No, calm down a minute here. Take it easy. No, I don't think he's going to do that. He's had the legal situation explained to him, you know, that he already has a wife. He certainly understands the legalities involved in this. I, I don't think he wants a charge of, of bigamy brought against him. I don't think Cynthia would let him do it anyway. Well, yeah. I, I hope you're right. Yeah. What am I going to tell my mother when I go home? Why do you have to tell her anything at all? What? Well, why don't you just tell her, let her believe that she's still here with me? I mean, is that going to hurt her? You mean lie to her? Well, it's just a little lie, and it's for an awfully good cause. No, no, I, I... John, I, I can't lie to my Oh, mother. come on. I'm sure you don't want to upset it, do you? No, uh, of course I don't. Uh, and it would upset her very much if she found out that Daddy's just gone off like this. So why don't you just let it pass? Yeah, well, uh, that probably his best. Come on, John. Look, I'm going to take a ride out to Flat Rock. I'm going to do some checking up on my own. Would you like to come along with me? No, I, I have to go tell my mother something. Okay, all right. You know, I am very concerned about your father. You know that? Hmm? <laughs> I'll let you know if I find out anything or if I don't find out anything. I think you just have to be patient, that's all. Tell me how you found this wonderful place. 
Well, I'm not exactly a stranger to this part of the country, you know. I used to come up here to a lake, not too far away from here. Really? Yep. I thought you were from Minnesota. You... Oh, never mind. Scratch that. Uh, that's part of the past, okay? Now, look, Cynthia. Mm. We don't have to feel awkward when a topic comes up about something in the past, especially my past. We're not going to go tiptoeing around sentences, picking and choosing our words all the time. That's exhausting. You're right. It is, of course. Okay. I will get our drinks, and then you will tell me. There you go. All about the lake. Well, it was called Crystal Lake. I used to come up here on camping trips. Rent boats to go fishing. This is nice, isn't it? You comfortable? Yes, very. You know, I tell you this. I've never done anything like this before. Well, I should hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donald, it's so peaceful and quiet here. Hey, you know what we should do? Mm. Why don't we take a walk in the woods before dinner? Whatever you say. Okay. Whatever you want. I'll tell you what. What? We'll take a walk down to the village tomorrow. There's some fascinating antique shops down oh. there, as I recall. Criden. Mm-hmm. And there's some uh, hiking trails. We're going to have a good time here, you'll see. I'm already having a good time. Yeah. You remember a great deal about it. Here, I mean. Well, I don't know why that should surprise you. I told you, I know the area. I always liked it. I remember sitting on the shore of the lake, watching the sunlight hitting the water. And there's a, there's a park with swings and a jungle gym in it. You know, I think the last time I was at a playground. Yeah, it was when Karen was just little. And I certainly don't know anything about fishing. But you know, you make it sound so wonderful. Maybe I'll give it a try. What do you think? Will you teach me how to fish? Donald? Donald? What is it? Oh, sorry, dear. Oh, you were a thousand miles away. No, no, not quite that far. What'd you say? I was asking you if you would teach me how to fish. Absolutely. I'd like nothing better than to get you out there and fishing right along with me. Oh, good. I think I'd like that, too. <laughs> so, what were you thinking about just then? No, oh, nothing much. Just remembering. I guess not any of us can do much about the past. But the future, now, that's at least somewhat manageable. I want to spend my future with you, making you just as happy as I possibly can. I'm as happy as anyone has a right to be. Yeah, but all this has been very hard on you. I know that. You've come through it and handled it so well, so patiently. That's because I have someone worth being patient for. Here she is, the famous Inspector 12. She makes sure that Haynes men's and boys t-shirts and briefs are as good as we say they are. Inspector 12. She pokes, she stretches, and that's just the beginning. Once again, Haynes t-shirts and briefs pass the lasting quality test. They don't say Haynes until I say they say Haynes. Now on sale, Haynes fashion underwear. If you could see through Crisco Oil's bottle, you could see how truly light it is. Well, now you can. Because now Crisco Oil's in a clear bottle. It's a lightness you can see and a lightness you can taste. Mmm. No heavy, oily taste, so your salads will be fantastic. Crisco Oil, now in a clear bottle. A lightness you can see, a lightness you can taste. Mmm. Delicious. Loves. Loves. 
Martha is so active. And she's comfortable. More comfortable since we found Love's. Love's hourglass design cradles her bottom in comfort. And Love's as flexible gathers for flexible fit. Love's. Love's fits comfortably. Ordinary diapers sag, leave gaps. Love's. Your baby's comfort begins with Love's. Love's. This portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you by The Comfortable Diver, Love's Disposable Divers, and by Crisco Oil, for fried foods with no greasy taste and for light-tasting salads. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. You first met her on 60 Minutes. Fed up with the system, she opened a one-room school in her own home. But we will never let others stop us from what? Learning! But the children resisted, and parents were afraid. My child ain't no man friend. Cicely Tyson stars in the Marva Collins story, Tuesday. This is CBS. Hey, New York, want to know why everyone's coming to over 500 discount merchants at the new QP's Marketplace? What brings you here? Just because we have money doesn't mean we don't like to save. Every designer jean you've ever seen, and a discount price is no less. Hot Austrian strudel, oh my. You save money on everything here, and it's so easy to get to. The weekend boxcar market at QP's Marketplace at the Queen's side of the 59th Street Bridge. Take any subway to Queen's Plaza. Buses and lots of parking, too. Saturdays and Sundays, 9 till 6. Maxi Thins? How can a thin pad replace my thick pad? Maxi Thins? Why should I switch from my thick pads to these thin pads? Because they're an alternative to Maxi Pads. Maxi Thins, new from Jampex. With Maxi Thins unique construction, you get a thick pad protection product with thin pad comfort. They're folded twice and individually wrapped so you can even hold one in your hand. They're an alternative to Maxi Pads. New Maxi Thins. Bruce's peels their yams down to the sweetheart, and my sweetheart likes them better than white potatoes. Bruce's yams peel down to the sweetheart. The Phony Express, tonight at 6. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Hi, Sophia. Yeah, hi. Good to see you. You gave us quite a scare. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. Now, the important thing is that you're all right. Oh, uh, piece for you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, put, them, put them there. I'll, I'll have somebody put them in water later. I guess I, I, I know what you want to talk to me about. Oh, you do? <laughs> well, what do I want to talk about? You want to talk about the party and, and what happened, and you're going to lecture me about what I did and how I shouldn't have done it. I, uh, <laughs> I don't want to lecture anybody about anything. I'm, it's too late for that now, anyway. I'm sure you learned your lesson about taking drugs with this episode. And I... Probably don't have anything to say about it anyway at this point. You do know that it was wrong, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm so ashamed about what happened. I'm so frightened by it. Well, the important thing is to learn from the experience. Tell me, um, have you ever used drugs at any other time since you came to Oakdale? Holy grass, but nothing like this ever happened before. Uh, trouble is, you don't know what you're getting. I'm sure you didn't know you were getting PCP. It's, it's too dangerous to take chances with. Yeah, I, I know you're right. Have you told Kim about what happened? Mm, yeah. She wanted to fly back from New York, but... Well, I convinced her that it wasn't necessary and that you were getting the best possible care. 
Oh, she asked me to give you her love. Thank you. I I'm glad she's not going to rush back. I know she's going to be furious when she sees me. Oh, no. Come on. She's not going to be angry. I give you my word. Uh, actually, she was relieved that you were all right. Oh, yeah. I'm all right. I hope. I know she doesn't like me, though. Who? Kim? Well, that's nonsense. Whatever gave you that idea? I had a dream about it. Sophia, you all right? Huh? I'm sorry, what? Uh, look, I'm going to have to, uh... I'm going to have to call Andrea in and Greece and tell her about this, you know. Oh, Nick, please. What, Sophia? Please, don't, don't, don't tell Mother. I mean, she'll get upset and, 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 and I'm all right now, right? I mean, you can see that I'm all right and everything will be fine, but, but she'd have to come all the way down here and she'd get upset and, and I promise I'll never, never no, do no, anything like that. No, 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 come like on, Sophia, that. take I'll, it easy, relax. Come on. Nick, please. I've begging you, please. Please don't call Mother. She'll make me go back to Greece, and I might have to live there, and I just couldn't stand that. You're please. getting yourself all worked up for no reason. I'm sure that she's, nothing like that's going to happen. But she is your mother, and she has a right to know that you're in the hospital. But I'm not going to be here for long, am I? Well, I can't say for sure. The, the doctors haven't told me. I don't think they know themselves yet. Uh, but I, I'll be fine, and... Uh, and I, 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 I could, I don't want to stay here. I want to go back to the dorm. I don't want to die. But Sophia, what are you talking about? You're not going to die. I told you, you're going to be fine in a few days. They just want to keep you here and run some more tests to, to make sure that you haven't done any real damage to yourself with all this. Well, if they find out I have, I might have to stay here for months. Oh, come on, let's not look for that kind of trouble. No, they don't want to keep you here long. Look, I just don't want you to get so upset. It's not good for you. I know. I know. You're right. Oh, hi. Hi, Sophia. Hi, oh, God, you're okay. Look, um, I'll run along and you two can kind of talk. Uh, no, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I'll, uh, I'll look in on you later, okay? Thank you for the flowers, Nick. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, how do you feel? Scared. I don't wonder. I was scared too, we all were. Have you seen Eric yet? Oh, yeah, I just saw him. Is he all right? He's not doing too good. Oh, it's all my fault. No. It's all my no, fault. No, 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 come on. Sophia, nobody blames you. Oh, yes, they do, or they will. I blame me. Oh, I never should have given him that joint. I, I should never have encouraged him to smoke that. Sophia, Eric has a big boy. He makes up his own mind, okay? He's going to hate me. Everyone's going to hate me. <laughs> Haley, I know you're... you're you're, you're just trying to be kind to me, but... I can't forgive myself. Would, would, would you do me a favor, yeah, please? Sure, sure. I'll try. What? Would you take me down there? I want to see him right this minute. Please. Uh, I can't. Honey, you can't get out of this bed. You have to ask a doctor to get permission to do that. There's something the matter with Eric. He's worse off than you're telling me. Are you telling me the truth? What do you mean? Eric, he's... He's gonna die, right? Uh, no! No, of course not! It, don't you think I would tell you if Eric were that sick? He, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be just fine. I don't believe you. Good. I've been so anxious for you to get back there. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you were waiting for me. I, uh, I just had a little lunch. Why'd you do that? I could have fixed lunch for you. I got hungry. It's a beautiful day out, you know. I, I decided I'd take a little walk. And... 
All right, never mind. Just tell me how how your talk with John went. What do you have to say? Well, not much, Mom. You see, Dad was at the apartment, so we really couldn't talk that much about his treatment. Do you mean you didn't accomplish anything? No, not in that respect, and we didn't. I'm sorry. Dee, you said you were going to be very assertive with John, and you were going to tell him that we wanted something done. And I will, when the time is right, Mama, I promise. No, no, I'm sick and tired of waiting. I'm going to see John myself, and I'll talk to him about it. Mom, it's not... Yes, I will. In fact, I'm going to call him right now, and I'm, I'm going to try to arrange something. Mom, there's no point in doing that. John's not home now. Where is he? Um, he went to the hospital, I think. Well, then your father's alone in, in the apartment now, isn't he? Well, yeah, I guess that he is. I don't know what his plans are. What, what are you going to do? I'm just going to call him. See if I can get him to agree no, to Mom, see... No, Mom, no, don't. Uh... Don't what? Uh, don't bother calling. Why not? Dee, what is wrong with you today? Dad's... Uh, he's not there. You just got through telling me that you didn't know whether I know what there. I just told you, and I'm sorry, but I didn't want to get, get you upset. I'm sorry. He's not there. Well, then where is he? I don't know. Dee, will you please... Kindly tell me what is going on. Uh, Daddy took off somewhere. Mom, he left a note saying that he'd be back in a few days. John and I found it this afternoon. He did what? Could you bake a better cake than a pastry chef? I really didn't know, but I do know how good my Duncan Hines cakes are. So I agreed to test one against a cake baked by Chef David of San Francisco's famous Canlis restaurant. My cake looked good, but the judge was Chris Canlis, the owner of the restaurant. That was Chef David's cake. It's tasty, but the texture is a little bit, a little bit dry. Then he tried mine. Good flavor, moist, very good. That's a great cake. Duncan Hines. <laughs> I think that's an exceptional cake. That's all a cake ought to be. Duncan Hines cakes. So moist and delicious, you can make them better than a pastry chef's cake. It's very good, nice and moist, and I'm going to have you be my baker. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the garbage that gets dumped in my sink and those food stains, they're tough to clean. But you know what else is in there? Germs. So I don't just clean with any cleanser. I comatize. That's the best kind of clean a sink can get, because Comet gets out tough, greasy food stains better than any leading cleanser. And look, it disinfects, too. If a cleanser doesn't do all that, it doesn't get a sink clean enough for me. Comet with Chlorinol cleans rings around other cleansers. It even gets out tough, greasy food stains they leave behind, and it kills most household germs. That's Cometized. Comet cleans better, and it disinfects, too. So why just clean your sink? Go all the way to Cometized. I'll tell you, I mean, what I can't figure out is why kids, or, uh, I mean, anybody for that matter, need to take drugs. Isn't life exciting enough as it is? Well, it's not excitement they're looking for, it's escape. That's crazy. I mean, uh, I wish I could escape back to being a kid again. Well, you say that now, but you didn't when you were their age. Jeff, I think all this emphasis on drugs has to do with the fact that, that people want to get out of themselves when they're unhappy. I know that that doesn't sound very original, but I believe it. Well, I mean, they should realize that there are other ways to do it. I mean, there's work, uh, playing sports, even watching TV. It's all a form of escape, right? Right, but you do that when you're alone. I mean, and a lot of people don't like to be alone. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I guess uh, kids, I mean, they, uh, they need companionship, and uh, they try to emulate the friends, right? 
Yeah, and it's not just kids who feel that way. Or who get into drugs. Well, they seem to be the ones that are getting into the PCP, though. I just think it really stinks that there's not more written about it. I mean, these kids don't know what they're dealing with. Well, I'll tell you something, you know. When I was a kid, we used to go out, get drunk, throw up all over our shoes. That was it. <laughs> What's the matter? I was just wondering who that lady is with Bob. Howard, I guess is the Dr. Brothers. How Hello. are you? Oh, it's Bobby. good to see you again. <laughs> it's, it's very been nice to see you. Some time. Oh, it's Dr. Joyce Brothers. I need to talk to you, Eric. Please. Annie Hollister, Jeff Ward, Dr. Joyce so Brothers. Nice to, meet you. nice to meet you. Bob Good told to us you, you were coming in, but I didn't realize it was going to be today. Well, I'm lecturing tomorrow in Chicago, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to come and visit Bob. Well, I'm certainly glad you did. I was telling Joyce about our local PCP problem. She knows a great deal about that drug. I'm so glad. I was just complaining to Jeff that there's just not enough available literature on it. Well, there's a lot written, but you really have to dig to get it out. I've clipped and saved all of the research reports and the articles on the subject, so I have quite a bit at hand. I'd be happy to help in any way I can. That's very nice of you. Uh, I think we're in the middle of something that we uh, really don't understand, and uh, if you can uh, take the time out, it would be a tremendous help. PCP is a problem that's growing in every community across the country, and it just infuriates me that some people would be willing to destroy the minds and lives of young people like that. PCP is so cheap to make that it's become the street drug of choice. Sad but true. Now, a lot of kids don't even get the chance to make a choice. They don't know that the marijuana they're smoking has been laced with PCP. Yes, that's the really sad part. You have no idea what you're getting when you take an illegal drug. Well, there were two such cases just brought into emergency last night. Bob was telling me about uh, Sophia and Eric. Uh, are those the people you're talking about? Yeah, that's them. It's a tragic situation. I'd like to visit with them for a while, if it's at all possible. Well, it's not only possible, I'll take you up there myself. But first, I'd like to give you a chance to drink some of your coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, why are you drinking? Why don't you tell us about your lecture tour? Are these well, university I... students or medical students? Uh, Joyce, I think you'd have to call this a busman's holiday. <laughs> of course, no one suspects that the PCP is originating in the lab at the hospital, but you see, all of that could change very quickly. Why? Well, if young casualties continue to be brought into the emergency room, public pressure for an investigation is going to grow. And eventually they may discover that, that the drug is originating in our lab. I didn't use my antiperspirant before court this morning. I, I thought, thought she would... <laughs> was gonna buy it. But even after my second day before a grumpy jury, I still felt dry, thanks to Sure. Look. Even after 48 hours, 70% of Sure's protection is still helping to keep you dry. You know, if Sure can keep me this dry on a day I can't use it, imagine how sure I feel when I always use it. Sure, an extra day of dryness, just to be sure. I know every father thinks his daughter's pretty, and I am no exception. My daughter Betty is a real ivory girl. I've used ivory all my life, even through my teenage years. Ivory's a basic natural soap. I don't like to use a soap that leaves heavy perfume or deodorant on my face. But Ivory has a natural kind of clean. That plus eating right and exercise really helps my skin stay healthy looking. I'm really proud of Betty. Healthy looking skin. Ivory can help you have it too. Uh, Nora! Yes, Aunt Jane? I know a guest shouldn't be critical, dear, but these towels don't feel as soft as they used to. But I used a fabric softener. You tried a dryer brand. Downy softens better. And I love that fresh smell it had before. You should have used Downy. Only Downy rinses in April freshness, and Downy softens through and through. Not just here and there, like dryer brands. And Downy helps rinse out static cling. My, these towels! Yes, Aunt Jane? They're softer now. And they smell fresh. Now, what happened? I'm using Downy again. She sure noticed the difference. I do love visiting here. Oh, Thanks. Deep downy softness, a noticeable improvement. Mmm, watch me really tickle their noses. Tickle their noses with blue 
blueberries. Duncan Hines blueberry muffins are filled with their sweetest, tastiest blueberries. Duncan Hines blueberry muffins. Mm. They taste just as great as they smell. Great taste. We expect you to do your job properly, Dr. Howell. Don't panic. Losing your composure could be a real danger. Yes, well, I'm, I'm not going to lose mine, Miss Marlowe. I mean, far from it. I have always been noted as a man who's able to keep his head, even under the worst pressure. And you must admit, I've done a very good job for you so far. I've had no particular complaints. Well, I admire your restraint. But the truth is, I haven't caused any problems for you and your associates now, have I? Not so far. Nor do I intend to. I'm doing the very best that I can. Which brings me to the real reason that I came here. It's very difficult for me to ask for a favor, but... Oh, come, come, Dr. Howell. Force yourself. Well, I was wondering if, in, in view of my cooperation and my willingness, uh, if the organization might be able to forgive a little bit more of my debt. I mean, do you think that that would be possible? <laughs> but we've already done that. Is this some new debt you're referring to? Uh, well, yes, I had a, a, a run of a little bit of bad luck uh, recently. Uh, but surely my value to the organization has got to be greater than the money I owe. And certainly they, they must understand the stakes that are on me. I mean, my entire career, my entire future is in jeopardy. That's an awfully big favor to ask of someone. Well, perhaps they feel that enforced cooperation isn't such a real favor in the true sense. Yes, well, well do you think that you might ask them? I, I would really appreciate that. It would be an awfully big load off my mind. You see, and, and then I would be able to do even more for the organization if I felt at the end of that time, you see, the, the slate would be wiped clean. All right. All right. I will, uh, I'll contact them and see what I can do in the matter. But I can't make any promises. No, no, no. I, uh, I understand that. But I would really appreciate it. I would be very grateful if you would ask them. And in the meantime, I don't think we should have uh, too much contact with each other. I suggest you don't come here anymore. If someone should see you, they might ask questions. W all right. W whatever you say. I just thought it was very important today. Yes, yes. I understand. And in the future, call me. Let me be the judge of the importance of what you have to say before you come all the way over here. Now, if there's nothing else... Who's that? Wait, are you expecting someone? Well, no, but I wasn't expecting you either. Well, don't be alarmed. I, I uh, simply ordered lunch. Must be room service. Hello, Miranda. Well, what are you doing here? I have to talk with you. Uh, James, you've come at a very bad time, and you should have called first anyway. Don't Americans believe in calling before they drop by? I'm sure you can spare a few moments. Well, 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 if it isn't Dr. Howell. Seems I have come at a good time after all, doesn't it? Hello, Doctor. Tell me, how is everything at your hospital laboratory? Some of the talks are held in large halls of uh, seven, eight hundred students. But I really enjoyed the talk I gave a week ago in a very small college in Ohio. The youngsters were so interested in understanding their own emotions. What kind of things did they ask you? Well, they wanted to know a great deal about responsibility in sexual relationships. <laughs> the media would have us believe that young people are very free and easy about sex. But I find them very thoughtful, very committed. They don't take it lightly at all. You're going to have to excuse me, Joyce. I have a consultation in a few minutes. I've oh, got to go upstairs. I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't mean to monopolize the conversation. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I wish you'd finish it. And I think you should, but uh, forgive me. I've got to go. Oh, that's fine. We'll have a chance to talk later. Good. Listen, you two, will you take Joyce up to see Eric and Sophia when you're finished here? Sure. Well, don't worry. We will take very good care of it after breakfast. I'm leaving you in <laughs> questionable hands. I hope so. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. He's such a nice man. Have you known Bob for long? For years, uh, we don't get a chance to meet very often, but we stay in touch. I get a Christmas card every year, and, and Franny sends me a birthday card every year. I, I just can't wait to see her. How long has it been since you've seen her? Oh, uh, Bob brought her to New York in February. Oh, she's grown a foot since then. I'm sure she's sh simply shot up. <laughs> uh, Dr. Brothers, w would you mind elaborating on, on what you were saying about how to talk someone down from a bad trip on PCP? Well, I was saying that it's very 
very important to be very soft-spoken, uh, very gentle, to, to reassure them just as much as possible. But at the same time, it's also important to be sure they are physically restrained. Oh, Dr. Brothers, is that really necessary? It sounds so barbaric. I know it does, but it can take as many as five or six strong men to subdue one small man who's had a bad PCP reaction. It seems to release enormous strength in a person. Uh, I can tell you some stories that are just incredible, but, but they're documented case histories. I don't understand that. I mean, is there some kind of chemical reaction that has that... What, Jeff? Isn't that Sophia? <laughs> is that the young woman you told me about with the bad drug reaction? Yes, Jeff. What on earth is she doing here? I don't know. May I help you? What do you want? Are you lost? What, 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 what? Blow harder, Henry. Pam, you're using your good china for our little darling? Come on, I know better. Look, here's the good stuff. Lovely. But the shine. How did you get your everyday dishes to look like this? Easy. Lemon fresh joy. Mmm, that smells lemony. Nice and lemony. And all Joy's thick sparkling suds help clean clear down to the shine. So even the kids' dishes shine like my good china. Lemon fresh joy sure helps get everything beautiful. Look, Mommy, I came my plate. <laughs> Henry helps too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lemon Fresh Joy cleans down to the shine so your everyday dishes don't look everyday. Sherry, I haven't dated in 30 years. Neither has he. But what can I wear? This will look good. But it's dirty. Only until it's washed with all temperature chair and warm water. Warm? I can't wear a half-washed blouse. Use hot. I'm using cooler water now, and that's what chair cleans in. See? Hot, warm, cold. Chair is tough on dirt and cooler temperatures. I hope so. I haven't stood up a date in 30 years. Well? You're beautiful. Cheers, terrific in warm water. Everything looks nice. It'll be like 30 years ago. Not quite. Now you can show him pictures of your grandchildren. <laughs> All temperature cheer. Tough on dirt. In today's cooler temperatures. Like the recipe for Maurice. No! No, it's an outrage. I cannot give away the recipe for Bill Maurice. Tell him uh, it's a secret from an old friend. Close call, mon ami. <laughs> Eloise, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> this chicken is something else. Mm -hmm. What you putting on it? Oh, child, I'd love to tell you, but Mama said never give away a secret. Lowry's seasoned salt. We're a cook's best friend. Mm-hmm. This week. I don't care what it takes, but you're going to get me to Liza. I can't do it, Travis! Liar, you don't even know where she is. And then? I've made arrangements for Lieutenant Wyatt to meet your jet and take you down to police headquarters. I'm prepared to go back and face whatever has to be faced. Search for tomorrow in Guiding Light, weekdays on CBS. Saturday, when a Georgia boy falls for a New York lady, he's as welcome in her heart as he is in his new neighborhood. John Schneider builds a dream house Saturday. Mom, I wish you wouldn't call the pharmacy. I know you do, but I'm going to anyway, Mom, so there's no sense you're trying to argue It's not going to accomplish it. anything. I tried to get him there myself. I told you that. Maybe he's come in since you called. Anyway, it's no sense. Hello? Uh, I'd like to speak with Donald Saunders. Is he there, please? Do you know when he'll be back? Well, uh, how about Cynthia Haynes? Is she there, please? No, um, all right, no, no, me no message. I'll, I'll call again. Thank you. He isn't there. I told you that. She isn't there either. What'd they say? She, she was out of town for several days. 
That means that she's with David. They've gone off somewhere together. Mom, no, that doesn't necessarily mean that. Oh, Dee, me... please. I'm just sick and tired of people humoring me and treating me as if I'm less than bright. Why didn't you tell me that he was missing? Well, first of all, Mom, missing is not the way to put it. Oh, well, then how would you He's put it? He's just gone away for a few days. I didn't want to tell you because I was afraid you were going to get upset. That's exactly what you're doing right now, isn't it? Yes, but I get even more upset when people try to conceal things from me. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to get upset. Oh, Dee, please. Now, I'm not being paranoid. Everybody just keeps trying to keep information from me. And it's information that I have a right to know, and I... I resent it. You're right, and I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I suspect you will. And do you know why? Because I think somehow John has managed to get you right back on his side again. And I think that he is manipulating this whole situation for his advantage. Don't be upset by what James said, Dr. Howell. How did he know? How could he find out? Well, I'm not exactly sure what he knows. Now, don't fall to pieces on me. I will call you later. We'll discuss it. I can't stand it. If he knows, anyone might know. Not necessarily. Control yourself. I'll be in contact with you. Oh, my God. My God. Well, you certainly managed to shake him up. What is it about that man that reminds me of the white rabbit? I don't think that was very funny. What was the point of all that? I want to get a reaction. Well, I don't like that kind of game playing. Your people are really busy, aren't they? First cocaine, and now it's PCP. Don't be stupid. We have nothing to do with PCP. I want it stopped. Oh, you do? Well, I had no idea you were in a position to give orders like that. Well, what I know about you puts me in a very good position. Knowing too much can be hazardous to your health, James. I suggest you run it up in needlepoint, hang it in your apartment. Well, I suggest that what you concern yourself with is what my knowledge could do to your organization. Oh. And, uh, how did you find out all this information about the lab? That is not your concern. I want the PCP manufacturing stopped, and I am out of the cocaine business. Oh, really? Well, well, you are wonder, James. In the beginning, you were opposed to the drug operation because of your high principles. And then when you found out how much money could be made from it, well, then you became less moralistic. And now, now that you are used to a higher standard of living again, well, your principles are rearing their heads. This has nothing to do with money. This thing's gone too far. People are getting hurt. Oh, and that bothers you. Well, you have a very tender heart. I never suspected. Listen, do you think the authorities are going to sit by and let all this happen? There'll be an investigation, they'll start asking questions, and when they do, I for one do not want to be involved. Your cowardice is constantly at war with your greed, isn't it? Must be very uncomfortable for you. I'll tell you one thing. If this isn't stopped, I will go to the authorities and tell them what I know. All of it. <laughs> you don't mean that. If you believe that, then you have a very unpleasant surprise coming. <laughs> Are you standing there trying to blackmail me? <laughs> Is it possible that that's what you're trying to do? I'm not trying to blackmail anyone. I'm simply telling you what I will do if this isn't stopped. Well, then you're a fool, James. That's all I can say. All right, I'm a fool, but I'm tired of being a fool and I want out. You will get out when we tell you you can and not before. I am sick and tired of working with weak, spineless men like you and Dr. Howell. 
You have no courage and no convictions, and you, you are ungrateful and greedy, and that's a fatal combination. What you say about me or to me doesn't matter. You and I are finished. And you, don't contact me again. You don't decide when we are ending it. I do. And as far as I'm concerned, our relationship is just getting started. I believe I've come at a bad time. No, 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 not at all. Please, come in. Hello, James. Hello, Bob. I'm afraid I must be going. I'll be talking to you later. Miranda, I meant what I said. Well, you, you know, I, I didn't expect you till a little later. Not that I'm not glad to see you. Let me get you a drink, or... What's wrong? I happened to overhear some of your conversation. I wasn't eavesdropping, but you were both speaking rather loudly. Oh, that. But it was just a business disagreement. Really? I think I'm beginning to figure out what's going on. Well, what do you mean? What do you think you heard? Enough to open my eyes a little. I'm beginning to understand why you keep yourself from... responding to me. Why do you say that? I mean, I it's don't... It's obvious. You're having an affair with James Stenbeck. That's what's going on, isn't it? You don't have to be pretty to be in an Irish soap commercial. Look at the bunch I wrote in about. <laughs> we come back here after a fire. We're hot and sweaty, really dirty. And Ivory really gets the dirt off. Without all the heavy perfumes or creams, other soaps leave behind. Ivory is a basic and natural soap that's made to get you clean. Even the smell says clean. We really do use it and we're really satisfied with it, you know, since it works so well. Ivory's pure, natural kind of clean. And that's clean. And that's clean. <laughs> Introducing a great new taste in toothpaste, Advanced Formula Crest in a gel. I love the flavor. I love the fight. It's a gel as tough on cavities as Crest, because it is Crest. Advanced Formula Crest. Our best Crest checkups may be ahead of us. Only Advanced Formula Crest has three flavors, regular, mint, and new gel. All with Fluorostat, Crest's proven cavity-fighting system. Kids love the flavor. Parents, Parents love, love the, the fight. fight. New Crest flavor, same Crest fight. portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you by Advanced Formula Crest, Crest the Cavity Fighter with Florestat, and by All Temperature Cheer, tough on dirt in today's cooler temperatures. Stay tuned for Search for Tomorrow, next on most of these CBS stations. Join us again, or as the world turns.